My name is Bob Cheesebro, and I'm a technical consulting engineer in Intel's compiler team. Welcome to the fourth in a series of videos covering Intel compiler vectorization essentials. In this video, we will explore the Pragma OMP SIMD in more detail. At a high level, the following loop is one kind of example that could be vectorized with SIMD that might not be vectorized with auto parallelization. This is a loop which cannot be auto vectorized by the compiler in the absence of any pragmas or clauses just by using runtime overlap checks inserted into the compiler. Without the SIMD directive, vectorization may fail since there may be too many pointer references to do a runtime check for overlapping array accesses. But with the SIMD pragma, the developer is asserting to the compiler that we know the usage model of these arrays and that we can assert that the arrays A, B, C, D, and E are all independent. Later on, we will look at modifier clauses that can be added to the Pragma OMP SIMD to explicitly control vector characteristics of loops and data usage. The trouble with relying on auto vectorization is that it is subject to the serial constraints of the language. You really have no way as a developer to express to the compiler what you know about the code. Your a priori knowledge as a developer cannot be conveyed as to whether or not star p is loop invariant, or whether a, b, or c arrays overlap. You have limited ability to indicate that sum is a reduction. The compiler is also forced to be conservative because a store to a sub i could potentially change star p. Auto vectorization is limited by the language rules. You just can't say what you want. The explicit programming effort here, afforded by the pound pregnant OMP SIMD with associated reduction clause, allows the developer to assert known information about the code, the memory access, and the use of data. The programmer is asserting the truth of these statements, so the compiler can just treat them as being satisfied and that it is okay to vectorize even if one of the assertions is incorrect. For example, by using the pound pragma OMP SIMD reduction on the plus colon sum clause, we are asserting that the loop is safe to vectorize and should be vectorized, which means that star p will be considered loop invariant by the compiler. A is not aliased with B, C, or sum. Sum is not aliased with B or C and is in fact a reduction with the plus operator. This also means that the plus operator will be treated as associative and commutative operation, meaning that the compiler can reorder for better vectorization. All this taken together means that the vectorized code is generated even if compiler efficiency heuristics do not indicate a gain. The net effect is that we can express to the compiler what we mean. Explicit vector programming lets you express what you mean. How does a developer use the SIMD directive? Here are some examples. For C and C++, you use the pound pragma OMP SIMD with modifier clauses. The OMP SIMD directive is targeted at loops. You can target either inner or outer loops with this pragma, so it is not just for inner loops though there is probably a lot of wisdom in using it for inner loops. It has a short lexicon of modifier clauses that change the meaning of the data usage patterns so that the compiler is better armed with the information it needs to vectorize the loop. The developer searched to the compiler that the following loop is suitable for vectorization. This means if the loop contains reductions, the developer must specify them. If induction variables are used, the developer specifies this. If variables are private to each lane, this is specified to the compiler as well. Pragma OMP SIMD is similar to the OpenMP Parallel 4 in that when a developer uses these pragmas, she is asserting that the loop is suitable for vectorization in the case of the Pragma OMP SIMD, just as she is asserting that the loop is suitable for threading when she uses the Pragma OMP 4. Just as in the case for explicit parallelization using Pragma OMP 4, the developer must validate that the results are correct. Very briefly, here is a list of clauses supported by Pragma OMP SIMD and what they mean. The reduction clause is important if the loop contains a reduction, such as a sum or an average. It provides a means of reducing an array of values down to a single scalar within a loop while avoiding inherent data dependencies. The linear clause identifies loop induction variables. It declares one or more list items to be private to a SIMD lane and to have linear relationship with respect to the iteration space of a loop. The stride of the linear access pattern can be specified as in the example here where it is specified to be 2, meaning i 
increments by a value of 2 within the loop. The safe len clause is used to assert that there are no loop carry dependencies within a specified radius of size vlen. If the safe len is not specified, it implies that the safe len equals the size of the natural vector length for a given data type for a given platform. For example, the default safe len would be 4 when using 32-bit data types on SSC2, which uses 128-bit vector registers. I would refer to this again as the natural vector length. Programmers need to make sure that the entire loop is vectorizable so that no loop-carried backward dependencies exist. For example, for SafeLen4, iteration J can depend on a value computed in iteration J-4, but not on a value computed in J-3. In other words, there is no dependency within a radius of 4 of any given loop index. If SafeLen is not specified, it defaults to the natural size of the vector for the data type used on the specific architecture used. The compiler is never required to use a specific vector length. It is permitted to choose any vector length less than or equal to the length specified in the SafeLen clause. The OpenMP 4.0 standard defines the pound pragma OMP SIMD safe length. For more information, refer to the OpenMP 4.0 specification here. The aligned clause specifies that the address of objects are aligned to the number of bytes specified by the parameter in the optional parameter list. The collapse clause allows the iteration of all associated loops to be collapsed into one larger iteration space that is then executed with SIMD instructions. The collapse clause may be used to specify how many loops are associated with the construct. The clauses private, first private, last private, all allow the user to specify variables to be treated as private within each vector lane. They follow the same syntax and semantics as the OpenMP threaded counterparts. Anyone used to using OpenMP threaded directives should be able to apply these clauses for the pound pragma OMP SIMD easily as well. If you want more information about these constructs, again, refer to the OpenMP 4.0 specification here. Restrictions on the use of Pragma OMP SIMD can be found in the document referenced before, but the Reader's Digest condensed version is reflected here. For C++ programmers, the Pragma OMP SIMD is applied to for loops only. Induction variables should be signed or unsigned integers. The associated loops must be structured blocks, no go-tos or jumps out of the block. A program must not branch into or out of a SIMD region. No OpenMP construct can appear inside a SIMD region. A loop body must be free from C++ exceptions and window structured exception handling such as set jump and long jump. Again, if you need more details on this, refer to the OpenMP 4.0 specification here. You may not realize that under the covers, these two plus equal operations mean very different things. Sum plus equal star p means that we are doing a reduction of all the array elements in array p and summing them into a variable called sum. p plus equal step is incrementing the address of the pointer to access the next element. Very similar looking statements with very different meanings. This is why the SIMD directive has been given such a variety of clauses to help tell the compiler what we actually mean by these statements. Now we'll look at the corrected code on this portion of the FOIL. Here we are explicitly calling sum out to be a reduction variable on the plus operator. And we call the variable p out to be an induction variable with stride step. Now the compiler has explicit information about how the developer intended this application to behave. This concludes our fourth video. Please take a few minutes to watch our next video in the series Performance Essentials 5, where we begin our exploration of OMP Declare SIMD.